Welcome to the Nadia Sahari Show. Hello, everyone. I am so thrilled. I have a guest today that is incredible. And boy, we're going to touch on different things, the coronavirus, the spiritual warfare that's going on in the world. And he is a spiritual warrior. And just wait till I tell you who it is. You are going to be amazed because this is the show that all of you must listen to and listen well and share it with everyone. Welcome to the Nadia Sahari Show. Are you ready to live your dream? Motivation, inspiration, and passion. That's what it takes to make dreams come true. Welcome to the Nadia Sahari Show. Here's your host, actress, author, entrepreneur, Nadia Sahari. Yes, we are in a spiritual warfare. Our earth is drowning. And now, I want to introduce to you Bill Bean, who is a world-renowned spiritual warfare deliverance minister and exorcist. And this is something that we all must listen to and learn. And right now, I don't want to even go into it. I want to introduce this fabulous person. Bill Bean, welcome to the Nadia Sahari Show. Thank you so much, Nadia. It is really an honor and pleasure to be on with you. Thank you. I'm so glad. It's been, it took a while uh, and uh, a lot of stuff going on and having to reschedule and everything, but here we are and I'm so thrilled, so thrilled. And I had no idea you were an exorcist until today. (laughs) Yeah, I have uh, been a man of many hats and boy, that's the biggest hat that I wear. I know that I've seen people, I've known people, I've met people, I believe that need some exorcism. Yeah, and, you know, it seems to be increasing. I have been, uh, I've traveled all over this country, and I've also helped people in 40 other countries. And what I would say to those that are watching or listening in is that this is very real. I wish that it wasn't, but it is. And God called me to do it. I didn't choose to do this. I didn't say, oh, gee, this is a cool thing to try. Uh, No, God actually called me to do it. And so uh, I resisted it in the beginning because I thought, how in the world could someone like me make a positive difference in someone's life? You know, certainly when it comes to matters of spiritual warfare and um, binding and rebuking and casting demonic spirits out of people, But it is by the power of God that I'm able to do what I do. I thank God and praise God for the calling. And there's nothing else that I'd rather be doing with my life than helping people to move forward in their lives. Amen. I'm so happy that you do what you are doing and that God called you to it. Because when God calls us to do something, that's when we have the joy and the peace in our hearts. And the life that he wants us to have instead of the life that we think we should have. I totally agree with you, Nadia. And really, the mindset needs to change now. I I can't twist anybody's arm to believe a certain way or to do things that I do or whatever. Um, We have free will. God gave us free will. However, God delights when we make the choice by our own free will to come back to him and to make him first and to really develop a real and authentic relationship with him. And when we can do that, Blessing and favor and protection will come. He'll make a way for us. God has made the way for me, has worked so many miracles in my life that I've lost count, and he truly does make the impossible possible. Oh, I agree with you a thousand percent. I have never been happy until I am in God's grace and he answers my prayers when I'm in his grace. When I'm out of it, which we're the ones that leave, he never does. Correct. And when I leave him, my life is a mess, and it takes years to cover it and to fix it because I have to get to that point where I find him again. And he's there, but I have to go to him again. <laughs> it's, it's so true. He never leaves us. We leave no. him, and that's where free will comes in. Yes. And that's why there's an adversary to mankind in the first place, because of the free will that he gave to us. So there is an adversary to mankind that will be there to create a variety of miseries because of free will and sometimes a bad choice. Yes. You are an exorcist, a deliverance minister, life coach, a best-selling author, media personality, inspirational speaker. 
You wear as many hats as I do, except <laughs> yours, I think, are more impressive. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, because uh, they're all doing God's work. I, absolutely. I just now found my mission. I believe that I've been missing my destiny because I've been doing my will and not his. Yeah. And his will is this new show I have, which I'll talk to you about, but I believe that you need to be on it as the life coach because Love it, it has to do, it's called Fearless Heart. And I just started it. The Nadia Sahari show I've had for 10 years. So this is the one you're going to be on today. But let's talk about you as the best-selling author. Yeah, well, I've written six books. And before I go any further, I want to congratulate you on that. And yes, I'd love to be a part of that. So we'll we'll see with God uh, how he brings that uh, yes. about. But it sounds great. It really yes. does. Yes, I love it because the life coach part, for sure, and the yeah. inspirational speaker because – we need that. And uh, yeah. and my other show is about all the personality disorders, the narcissisms, the uh, bipolar, the I mean, just all that. So we'll cover all yeah. that. And, and I think that you're going to be a great guest for that as well. Love it. Uh, as far as the books, I've written six books. Yes. And, um, you know, the first book was called Dark Force, and that was about uh, my story my family story, you know, I suffered greatly as a child. So I fully understand why God called me to do this work because I had a great deal of suffering as a child. My family was literally destroyed by demonic forces and I was nearly destroyed as well. And I had written about it in the first book, Dark Force. And God has made such a transformation in my life. So I was a victim for a long time. And once I decided that it was going to make God first in my life and accept his son, Yahshua, Jesus, the Christ into my life. My whole life changed. And now it was not an overnight change. It was a process. And the reason that it was a process is because, again, it goes back to free will. Yes. We get into these mindsets and we get into habits and patterns. This is where the life coach aspect comes in. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to break those habits and patterns and mindsets. So for me, uh, having suffered so greatly for so long, I was in the fear-based, trauma-based way of thinking and living. So it required a titanic effort on my part, and certainly couldn't have done it without uh, the favor of God and the power of God and, and the covering and blessing of God. However, I had to do my part, too, and my part was to step out of that way of thinking and living into what I call warrior mode, which is faith, strength, and courage. So once I eliminated the fear out of my life, the transformation uh, came about even more quickly. And I've given over 2,000 media interviews in my career. Wow. And so I've said this many times. I, am, I can never thank God and praise God enough for what he has done for me. It's amazing the transformation that has taken place in my life, and my life is 50 times more blessed than it's ever been cursed, and praise God for that. But I did suffer greatly, and I, uh, I've had a lot of loss. Uh, both of my parents were gone at a very young age for me, uh, and a lot of other family members as well, so I had to grow up very quickly. I quit school in the eighth grade, lied about my age, went to work for a construction company. I grew up on the streets, with the hung out with the worst of the worst people. I drank, I did drugs, I was violent. Uh, you name it, I should not really, if not for the power of God and his love and favor on me, I would be either dead or in prison now. So a real true transformation took place in my life. So that was the first book, Dark Force. The second book was a continuation of the first, sort of like a part two called Delivered. And again, I really share my faith even stronger in that book. And then the third book was called 10 Steps to Victory, uh, 10 Steps That We Can Employ Into Our Lives to Move Forward. And, and look, I, I can tell you that my life is 50 times more blessed than it's ever been cursed, and that's true, but it doesn't mean my life is perfect. Nobody has a perfect life. We all have no a set way. of issues and challenges. That's right. But when we have God with us and we're truly making God first, he'll make the way. So we are ready to meet those issues and challenges by the power of God, because if God's with us and for us, then nothing can stand against us. So that's my mindset. Being in this warrior mode, I don't fear anyone or anything except the one that I do fear is God himself because he's our creator. 
I fear him, but I also love him too, and I worship him and I revere him. And every single day of my life, when I open my eyes, I thank him and praise him for the day, because most people don't realize this, Nadia, that God works a miracle for us every single day. It's the miracle of life. When we open our eyes, he has worked a miracle for us. So I thank him and praise him for that every day of my life. And now uh, my life is just totally dedicated by the power of God and the calling of God to help other people. So, yes. So I wish... Uh, you know, these demonic powers didn't exist. I, I wish that all of this was just, you know, crazy talk and fantasy land. But unfortunately, these things are real. And just as surely as there is uh, a magnificent God who created everything, there is an adversary to mankind that he created. And that adversary to mankind mimics everything that God does. He puts a vulgar twist on it. And he has a kingdom as well, a demonic kingdom. And so, uh, again, these things uh, create a variety of miseries for many people on the earth, including myself. Uh, the first time that I had uh, had any type of demonic experience took place at five years old. Uh, I was five years really? old. in 1971. Yeah. Wow. Five years old. And what yeah. was that experience? Oh, my goodness, uh, Nadia. You know, again, I've given many, many interviews in my career, and whenever I think about this, I can't describe in words how traumatic that was, you know, just to have a visualization of it right now and revisiting that. Really? I, uh, I was in my bed asleep. My brother and I shared the uh, first room on the right, so you would go down this long hallway uh -huh. that had a uh, hard towel floor and it had uh, dark brown paneling on the walls. And oftentimes laying in bed, you would hear these footsteps coming down the hallway. It would reverberate off that brown, dark brown paneling like the person had boots or hard soled shoes on or something. So I'm in my bed asleep one night. My bed was closest to the door and something woke me from my sleep. I couldn't see anyone there, but I knew something was there. And I got frightened and um, I got out of bed. I was going to go and get wake my parents up. And as I got out of bed, which was on the left side of the bed, something grabbed me by my shoulders, a tremendous force and threw me back on the bed, pinned me to the bed and I couldn't move. I felt paralyzed. The only thing that moved were my eyes. And oh my goodness, this went on probably for minutes, but it felt like hours. And a lot of horrific things took place during that experience. And again, I felt like I was going to die. I felt like my heart was literally jumping out of my body. Mm. I tried to scream out for my parents. My mouth wouldn't work. This was truly a horrific experience that happened many, many times to me, beginning at the age of five in 1971, probably up until uh, 1980 of, of living in the house. So it happened many, many times. And my mother suffered far greater than I did. She was regularly physically attacked by these demonic entities up until the time of her untimely death uh, in 1981 at the age of 44. Now, let me ask you, is, is it possible that did, did your parents happen to buy an old house? I mean, could it have been a haunted house? Well, what happened, there are uh, many factors in this. And I found out after I'd written my first book called Dark Force yes. that uh, family members from many, many, many years ago had actually conjured up these demonic forces through invocation and ritual. And those demons came on the family that were invited in and they created a variety of problems, including untimely deaths and many hardships. Oh. and. So I also found out that my mother and her siblings had many paranormal supernatural experiences in their childhoods. And as a matter of fact, they actually lived in the very area where we were living. So she'd already been exposed to that area. So I find it very interesting that I feel my parents were led back to that area and to that home where evil was already present and manifest in the home. So we were caught in the middle of this storm of evil and i think that's why it was so severe for my family and i and furthermore i have been contacted by people over the years from the area mm -hmm. telling me about their horrific experiences so we have a combination of 
demons that were conjured up by family members that I feel actually led us to that place where evil was already present and manifest. And again, that's why it affected us in such a severe way. Amazing, amazing. I can hear the wind where you are. The wind is yeah. strong. Wow. Sure is. Oh, yeah, my. it's uh, <laughs> uh, March March winds in April. Oh, it's amazing. I I, yeah. I mean it's like a like a whistle. <laughs> I, I wish you would blow that coronavirus right off the uh, face of the earth is what oh, I Oh boy, we're going to talk about that later. Now you had an incident with a car in 1974. Tell us about that yeah. one. Yeah, and again, this is uh, at the house, and I, I, I'll give you a brief description of the layout of this yes. house. But the, the house is located at the bottom of a downhill cul-de-sac. So if you were driving a car down there, you know, you would drive, obviously, you know, head on, uh, you know, uh, the nose first, the front first. And then people would, uh, because, again, just picture a horseshoe and going straight down. And, and so whomever visited would get back in their car and they would back up, you know, back up the uh, the circle, the street, and then turn and, and go about their way. So on this day, my step-grandfather, he and his brother had a bakery uh, nearby, and he would always uh, stop by in the mornings to bring uh, all of us to bake goods and things of that nature. So he came on this day and... Uh, He's in the house, you know, he brings breads and donuts and all kind of stuff, and it's time for him to leave. So uh, my dad, William Bean Sr., and I walk out with him to his car. So this is 1974. Mm -hmm. He had a, uh, I believe it was a 73 Chevy Impala. The car was like new, no problems at all. Mm -hmm. uh, he took very good care of it. So he, uh, we walk him out to the car, and we're standing in front of the car. He gets in the car, starts it up. My dad is to my right, so he is closest to the driver's side. And he's probably midway in front of the hood. And again, I, uh, I am next to him uh, on his, uh, would be his left. And so my step-grandfather uh, starts the car up. And he, he says, said at that time, that as soon as he put it into gear, and how my father got us out of the way of this is a miracle in itself. And I believe that God worked a miracle that yes. day and spared yeah. us of our life. So when he puts the car in gear in reverse, it suddenly goes into drive and something mashes his foot down. And he ran right through where we were standing and plowed through a fence and then through a, a block barbecue pit that was attached to the house next door to us. Uh -huh. Just Unbelievable. I mean, and, you know, obviously did a lot of damage to the house, to the car, to the fence. And it was miraculous that I really do believe that God spared us on that day and got us out uh, from away from the front of that car before it ran us right over. We'll be right back. We're going to take a short break. So don't go away. <music> Amazing story. You know, I had a similar story, but, but for a different reason. Oh, my goodness. You, you've been through a lot as well. Well, <laughs> it's it's something that I did, <laughs> not a demon or not anything else. It's I was uh, I was parked. I, I was teaching myself how to drive a stick shift. Oh, no. I was 19, 19. And the car was parked between two other cars. You know, I was in the middle. And so I'm teaching myself how to drive. I'm on Jefferson Road in Detroit. Jefferson and Alter Road. Okay. Which is a busy highway. It's, I mean, four-way traffic. So I'm over here trying to learn this shift gear and all that and get out of this spot. And I get, I managed to, I hit the gar car in the front of me. I hit the car in back of me. I made oh, space. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I made I made space for the car for me to get out. So I got out of the, I got out of the space and but I didn't know how to stop the car. I didn't know how to I kept going. I I oh. had it in drive, but I did not know how to reverse the gear or stop the gear or nothing. The car just kept going. 
by itself. And I went right into the intersection of the four-way traffic. And lo and behold, God's miracle, no traffic. Praise I would have God been crushed to death. I would have been yeah. crushed to death by four vehicles. And I turned the steering wheel and made a turn. And then it occurred to me to take the key and because I was panicked. So I took the key and I shut it off and the car stalled. <laughs> I guess that was the end of you with uh, stick shifts, right? Well, I learned the hard way. Let's put it that way. I learned everything the hard way. I'm the kind of girl that kind of thinks, oh, it's going to get better. Everything's going to work. And I give opportunity to whomever and whatever is going on in my life and think things will get better. But sometimes they don't <laughs> like the stick shift. But they did get better with the stick shift because I did the floor shift uh, for a lot of years. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a miracle. That's truly a miracle. And, yes, I've been in that area, uh, in in the general area there in the Detroit area. I have a lot of clients from the yes. Detroit area. So I know that area, and I know that it's very busy roadways there. Yes, it is. <laughs> wow. Yes. Oh, I, I have so many stories. Oh, my Lord. But, you know, the Lord has saved me from death, just like you were saying about yourself. Yeah. The Lord has saved me from death so many times. And it's because he has a mission for me, and I just never got to it till now. And so now I'm doing it, and I'm praying that he shows me exactly what he wants me to do. So the beginning is the show, and it's, yes, and I truly believe it's going to be something huge. No but question. I know it because it's about him and his grace. Yeah. So let's talk about, well, wow. And so your dad was attacked by demons. Your mother was attacked by demons. Yeah. You were attacked by demons. How long did you live in that house? We lived in that house from 1970 to uh, December of 1980. When I started writing the book, uh, I just couldn't believe it. it was very difficult for me to write because I had to put myself back in that situation and relive all of those things. Yes. So it was very, very difficult. And then it, it struck me, you know, how in the world did we live like that and in that environment for 10 years, nearly 10 years? I mean, just or it was it was over 10 years. Uh, just it's unfathomable. How did you? Well, I think what happens is, is we, no matter how bad the situation is, just, and I say in the book, it's like prisoners in a POW camp. No matter what your situation is, you start to adapt to that, no matter how bad that is. And then all of a sudden, that becomes acceptable. And for us, we would accept these things in stride. You know, it happened so much that we anticipated these things happening, and they did happen. So that's... What happens is, and no matter what form of abuse a person may be going through, that's what happens. The mindset will accept that as now uh, you're resigned to, to think that that's your life. And so you will just try and adapt no matter how horrible the situation is. And so uh, once again, uh, yes, God works for me to deliver people from demonic forces. But then I have to sit down after that's over with and become the life coach and put a game plan together for the person's life moving forward. And certainly that involves breaking the chains and breaking the patterns of living in those types of unacceptable uh, situations. You are so, so right. And it is abuse. I mean, the demons were abusive and you got used to the familiar way of life with them. Yeah. And you accepted them. It's just like being abused by your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend or so anyway. Yeah. It... Wow, you've been through a lot and I can relate with you. Honestly, I feel like you're telling my story. Yeah, and... isn't that amazing? Yeah. But that's what God does. He will um he brings people into your life for a reason and he takes people out for a reason. Yeah. So Why? so if we if we live our lives in that manner again. We just have to trust in him. So it's all about faith. And we know that God will always make a way for us. So therefore, even in those types of situations, those patterns are severed. Once yes. we decide to really come back to God and make him first. Uh, and what I often suggest is, and whether it's me or somebody else, 
I suggest when I'm doing these interviews that, you know, when people have suffered in, in great and terrible ways, yeah. they need a spiritual deliverance because it is part of a purging. This has to be purged from the person in order to be truly set free and have all these things severed. That's what's required. Yes. And so I'm honored and thankful that God works through me in this way. And I can't tell you how many times people have said to me, wow, it just feels like a thousand pounds off of me now. You know, I can really move forward with a clean slate and start a new chapter and a new season in my life. I love it. I love it. Well, maybe I'll have you do deliverance on me. <laughs> yeah, it would be my honor and pleasure. Um, yeah. I Listen, anything that God wants me to do, I'm there right now to do it. I'm living for him. I'm living for no one else. And I want to talk Good for you. about you. Thank you. I want to ask you, you've done a lot of uh, TV programs. You've been on episodes yeah. of the Travel Channel series, Holzer Files, along with episodes from a haunting series. Yeah. You've been a uh, regular with George Nuri on the Coast to Coast AM, and he's appeared on Lifetime Movie Network series. You have. Yeah. You've been on a Lifetime Movie Network series. Yeah, and, oh, uh, absolutely. Called I Was Possessed. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that was a pilot episode, Nadia. Uh, they were, I was actually appeared in two episodes of that, and they were pilot episodes. I don't know what happened, but something didn't go right in this, and sometimes we have to praise God for the unanswered prayer. Yeah. Um, these were pilot episodes for, uh, it was building for my TV series, which was going to be called The Exorcist Files. It was going to air on Lifetime Movie Network. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, in the 11th hour, uh, it got canceled because Lifetime said that the content would be too disturbing for its viewers. And so even though it didn't go the way that I thought it was going to go, I still praise God for the experience and having been a part of the two episodes and uh, they've been broadcast and rebroadcast all over the world. And I'm thankful to God for that. So we have to be thankful for the unanswered prayer sometimes as well. There's a reason for everything. Yeah, absolutely. So I accept that and just move forward. But yes, I have, uh, it's amazing. I've given over 2000 media interviews in my career and appeared on a ton of TV shows. I have another one I can't talk about right now, but it's going to be coming out soon. And it is uh, one of those uh, major paranormal shows out there. And I'll let you know, once I get the green light to be able to talk about it, I certainly will let you know. And then the next time I come back, we'll talk about it. That'd be wonderful. You know, I've never had a demon experience except maybe uh, seeing people that might have demons <laughs> uh, or they behaved it, like they were possessed or they uh, I I know there are people that need deliverance especially today there's oh, there's yeah. a lot of they call it mentally ill and but there's so many things out there today and I believe a lot of it a lot of people need deliverance I totally agree I mean I've been to churches to where people have lined up down the aisle and I'm performing one deliverance after another. It's quite exhausting. One wow. is quite exhausting. But when you have 50 or 60 or more people lining up and coming down, I mean, by the time that's over, there is nothing left. But there, you're absolutely right. There are so many people in need. Um, I have been in churches to where I've been called to churches to perform exorcism and deliverances over the pastor, their wives, their families, the congregation. You'd be shocked. I am uh, shocked. Yeah, it's just absolutely amazing. So there are no boundaries in this. Wherever there's a crack in the door, the devil and his minions will kick it in. I don't care who it is. I have helped some very high-profile people, and I have helped the poorest of poor people and everybody in between. So when the, the crack in the door is there, he's going to kick it in. Well, it's it's very dangerous. It's a, it's a we have demons all around us. Yeah, and it's true. We do, and we have angels around us. Yes, you talk the words right out of my mouth. That where God assigns angels to every man, and we praise Him for that. But the devil again mimics God and copies Him, and He will assign demons to every man as well. Well, you know the thing is, the reason we have demons and angels, well, we have the demons because it's 
the way God tests our faith and our love for him. If we voluntarily go the way of the demon, of those satanic ways, and we go and, and we live for the devil, we live to... to we live in the world. We live with the worldly yeah. ways, the way Satan wants us to live. He wants us to to doubt God and to disbelieve and not have faith and not love, and but to worship him. And if we, unfortunately, a lot of people go that direction. And that's why they don't have the love in their hearts for God. Because if you can't, if you don't love yourself, you can't love God. You don't love God. You don't have God. You have to have God in order to get love. Am I correct? You're absolutely correct. So Jesus is a prime example of that. He was selfless. So he always put himself last. Well, it's the devil who is selfish. And he wants, so the devil doesn't care if people believe in him or not. What he wants is people to become narcissistic, full of themselves to where, they don't care about anyone or anything. And furthermore, if somebody dropped in front of them, they'd step right over top of them and just keep on going. That's what the devil wants. He wants that selfish mentality to where nobody else matters. It's all about me. And here we are living this now, Nadia, where you, all you have to do is take a look in our country and, and some places around the world as well. It is this um, era of the selfie. It's all about me. Uh, you know, all these it's vanity yes. it's selfishness. You see all these different yes. types of shows that promote this. Yes. I read uh, earlier today, I read an article that said only 6% of Americans now believe that the Bible is true. 6%. Wow. That's sad. That is sad. I hope it, that's not true. It's a great falling away. And look, we've read about this in the Bible. This is a, a great falling away. And I'm praying now that God will work through me to help to plant the seeds in people to where we could start a great new revival and come back to God. We are where we are right now as a society, as a people, and suffering in the way that we are because we have just gone away from God. We don't want God, and we only want to worry about ourselves, and that's it. And that's why we are where we are today. Bill, you are so true. You are so correct. And this coronavirus is because most of us in America are self-centered. We don't yeah. know who God is. We don't care who he is. The kids today don't even know the name God. They don't even know who he is, that he even existed, that he even created this earth. They know nothing. Look at how they behaved on the beach in Florida when, oh, because yeah. they thought it was all the older people. And yeah. they were just like throwing it in our faces like, ha, 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 ha. You're all dying, but we're over here on spring break and we're having fun. I was and you know so what disgusted. happened? Some of them got it. Some yes, of them they actually did. got it. Yes, yep. they did. I was just so disgusted. I've never seen a generation that was so belligerent and so selfish. And that's Satan. Care. That's yep. satanic. Yes. That's the narcissism. That's exactly true. That is narcissism. That We have to discuss this on my fearless heart. Because we will. this is true. And we are, and you're right, this is what we're going through. This is a wake-up call. And yeah. I hope to God Americans wake up because, and they better start reading the Bible, praying to God, putting God in their hearts, because if they don't, this earth is gone. This Time's coronavirus out. is going to kill all of us. And, and I'll tell you, Nadia, I, God loves us so much. This is why we haven't been destroyed yet, is because God loves us so much yes. that he's giving everybody every opportunity to try and come back before it's too late. That's but, right. Make no mistake, I truly believe this. Has God told me this? No. But I truly believe it by what I'm seeing in the world, uh, that we are in the last days and time is running out and people better get a hold of themselves and, and really decide for themselves uh, that they need to go back to God and make God first in their lives and he'll keep it covering over us. I'm not fearful at all for my life, uh, my wife, uh, or, or loved ones, because I believe that God has a covering over us, and I thank him and praise him for that. And I feel that every person that has a real and authentic 
relationship and connection with God should feel that same way. But I'll tell you, I'm very worried for the people that have forsaken God, for the people that uh, are just literally, whether they know it or not, are living for the devil. Because if you are a narcissist and you're living for yourself and you're full of yourself and it's all about you, you are not living for God. You are living for the devil, whether you want to know it or not, or whether you want to believe it or not. That's right. You're absolutely right. And we are supposed to care. We are supposed to pray for them. And, yeah. and we're supposed to uh, pray that God has mercy over all yes. of us and mercy over those who do not believe. And let's pray. I, I say it at my shows all the time that America needs to get on their knees and pray and ask God, God's mercy right now. I agree. And if we all prayed, can you imagine what would happen? It would be a revival. He'll hear our prayers and he will have mercy on us. And so uh, it's so super important. Now, look, again, I can't twist anybody's arm to do anything, nor do I want to. But as part of this calling that God has put on me as a man of God, I try my best. If you look at my social media pages, I'm always posting prayers for people, always posting scriptures, always trying to plant the seeds to lead people back to God. And that's all I can do. Yes. Uh, then it's up to the person if they decide that they want to do that. But I pray every day that God works through me to be a blessing to somebody. And I will continue to do that for as long as I'm on this earth. God bless you. Would you please tell the audience how they can reach out to you and where they can find you on social media? And I want to thank you again, Nadia. This has been a real pleasure to be on with you. And uh, you are top notch and look forward to it again. And thank you, everybody out there for listening in. And, and God bless all of you. May God keep you safe uh, during these very difficult times. And for anybody out there, if you are in need, please don't hesitate. You can contact me at billbean.net. Uh, if you forget that, punch my name into Google. You'll get the phone book. You'll, you'll see how you can contact me. But the best way is billbean.net. You can email me directly from the website. I will see your message. My assistants will get back to you. In some cases, I'll get back right away as well. I'm just very, very busy. I'm, I'm overwhelmed right now uh, with the amount of people that are seeking comfort and prayer and help. However, I've said this many times before, and it's worth repeating. Though I am busy, I'm never too busy to help somebody. So don't hesitate. Reach out, and I will do everything, anything and everything that I can by the power of God to help you. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. God bless you. And I am so honored to have you on my show. I am so honored. And I want you to come back and we'll talk about this spiritual warfare because it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, of course, if it's the end of the world here and uh, nobody repents and nobody gets on their knees and God says, okay, this is it, then we'll see each other in heaven. Exactly right. And God bless you as well. And may God keep you blessed and safe during all of this and your family also. And yes, definitely look forward to the next time. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. I want to thank Bill Bean for being on my show. What a blessing he is. What a miracle. What a wonderful human being. Be sure to contact him because we all need deliverance, and right now we all need to pray for America. If we all get on our knees right now, we can save America. We can save the earth. God wants us to come back to him. We've been gone too long. The salvation prayer is easy. It's so easy that people think it's hard. Jesus died on the cross. He was resurrected for our sins. He died for us. He's perfect, and he's the only perfect one on the universe. Jesus is sinless. We are filled with sin. That's why this world is a mess, and that's why we have the coronavirus. If you will, and if you want to, ask God to forgive you and surrender your life to him, your heart to him, and let him guide you and give you the peace that you need. This is the prayer to ask. You can ask him silently in your heart. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. You bore every single one of them. 
and you have given me a new life. I confess all of my sins to you, Lord, to wash me white as snow and forgive me for every sin I have committed. I now ask to receive you as my Lord and my Christ. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Make me and mold me into the person that you want me to be, the way that I should be for you, and to be a good witness to many. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for dying on the cross for all of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. That's it. That's it. And if you meant every word with all of your heart, you are now a child of God. You are now a born-again Christian. And I ask you to read the Bible, and God will speak to you through the words from the Bible. Those are his words. Join a non-denominational church. There are some now that are online that you can listen to. One is Life Family with Randy Phillips of Phillips, Craig, and Dean. There's Joel Osteen. There's Joyce Meyer. There's so many. You can learn God's will from these fabulous people. And thank you so much for listening to the Nadia Sahari Show. Thanks for tuning in with Nadia and her guests. For more info, episodes, and connection, please visit our website, thenadiasaharishow.com. Share episodes with your friends. Follow us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Instagram, and most importantly, never give up. Live your dream. Latin Connection Magazine is a family magazine featuring people of influence, cultural events, and traditions, recipes and photos of Latin food, Hispanics and business. Plus, get news on Latin festivals, Latin entertainment, and Latinos in the fashion industry, and see photos of Latinos in action all over the U.S. Conoce tu vecino y mucho más. We invite you to share your special event with us at latinconnectionmag.com. Latin Connection Magazine. Conexión Latina y mucho más. Latin Connection Magazine. It's for anyone and everyone to enjoy, no matter who you are.